After 82 days alone at sea, Ellen has cleared the Southern Ocean relatively unscathed. Her sleep strategy, taking shorter and shorter naps, has paid off. She's in the lead for the final stretch. Then, disaster strikes. During the night, Ellen hits a floating metal container. It smashes the dagger board and damages the rudder. If she can't repair it, the race is lost. Ellen has worked through the night. She's desperately tired and pushing herself dangerously close to the edge. I'm actually really tired. <laughs> we didn't need this. <sighs> Emotional levels rocket when we are sleep deprived and it affects judgment too. But Ellen keeps her focus and after 48 hours on deck, she manages to mend the damage. Despite the bad luck, Ellen holds on to second place. It's 10 p.m. on the second day of the exercise and the volunteers have been taken prisoner. They're about to discover that sleep deprivation is one of the most powerful weapons of war. The symptoms of chronic sleep loss are very similar to aging. It could bring on diabetes, hypertension, and heart failure. Before the exercise continues, a doctor must assess their mental and physical stability. Tell me your name. I'm sorry, sir, I can't answer that question. No, this is not the interrogation phase. Just tell me your name. I'm sorry, sir, I can't answer that question. Okay. Jill, I am the doctor and I cannot be impersonated. I'm not one of the interrogators. Now, just tell me your name. This is for briefing purposes. I repeat, I cannot be impersonated and I am functioning as the doctor. I'm sorry, sir, I can't answer that question. Okay. Do you have any medical injury or illness which prevents you from continuing? Do you wish to continue? To keep them awake, the volunteers are subjected to white noise and forced into torturous stress positions. Well, after prolonged sleep deprivation, the higher centers of the brain which make us human just switch off, uh, and quite simply you turn into a robot. You really are much more suggestible uh, because your own thinking is gone, and so you are more likely to absorb the thoughts of others. After four hours of interrogation, the volunteers are asleep on their feet and some are reporting hallucinations. It appears to be some sort of dream intrusion. They've actually momentarily not only gone into sleep, but they've gone switched into dreaming sleep. It's now 5 a.m. After 52 hours without sleep, they're finally released. The challenge is over. Interesting stuff. Their concentrated and uncomfortable experience illustrates what happens to all of us over a much longer period, simply by skimping on sleep. Sleep deprivation is cumulative, affecting our memory, our judgment, our ability to solve problems, eventually, even who we are. Look at me. Okay. How are you feeling? My head is really light. Mm -hmm. I can't seem to focus. I've got some good news for you. The exercise is over. OK. Five. So you've, you've managed to hang in there. At last, the volunteers can get some sleep. For Ellen MacArthur, too, sleep deprivation is over. After 94 days at sea, Ellen crosses the finish line. 
She has smashed every record in the book. She is the fastest and youngest woman to sail solo around the world, and she's done it on half her usual sleep. The best moment, probably right now, and the worst moment is going to be in about 30 seconds' time when I have to get off the boat and walk up the pontoon, and I don't want to say goodbye to her. Sleep is a universal imperative. We can try to change our patterns of sleep, and this can work for short periods, but it's certain that the mind and body's long-term health depends on a good night's sleep. <laughs>